PayPal viewers, today for the initial checkout we have a General Electric 900 megahertz cordless caller ID answering system telephone. It is the model number 26998GE1. Has a backlit three line caller ID display. Caller ID call waiting digital answering system. English, Spanish, voice prompts. And they call it three lines. It, it, it is three lines, but it's it's one line of defined characters, one of line of numerics, and one line of alphanumerics. I suspect the transmission is analog. There's a more complete list of the features. You can pause the video and peep that if you so desire to. And with the front of the box look like it's pretty much the same thing as the back, just in a different orientation. So I guess they probably did that so uh, you could put it either way on the shelf in the store. In fact, they got both sides are in one position. And it's not a different language. That's kind of weird. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, let's take a look and see what we have here. General Electric phones, I have mixed feelings about them. I grew up with several General Electric models. My grandparents had, for the longest time, General Electric phones in the, in the kitchen, hanging on a wall. And they always were breaking, and they kept buying more General Electric ones. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I've always had them near, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of them really didn't seem like they were the greatest quality, which is too bad because I did have some pretty good designs over the years. There were concepts, I guess we should say, the design clearly had something wrong with it. There was generally two companies that made these telephones for General Electric. You had Atlinks or the Atkins, which is what this one is, and then you had Thompson's, and then for further confusion, they're like one in the same, which I don't quite understand, but uh, that's that. So the model number here on the phone is uh, the same as a box 26998G1 hyphen D. The box does not have the hyphen D, so I don't know what that what that stands for and there's a number on here there's a date code somewhere that, that Cole knows how to decode I don't know which one of these numbers is the one that that has the date crypted into it hopefully it's one of those numbers I suspect this is probably a product of the very early 2000s it would be my guess This was probably sold into the 2.4 gigahertz era. My grandparents had, for a very short period of time, a 2.4 gigahertz set that was very similar to this one. It was a corded, cordless unit. And when they first got it, I believe the intention was to have the, the base and the kitchen and in the cordless unit downstairs because my grandfather always spent a lot of time downstairs and it had the intercom so I thought that would be useful and that phone from day one it never quite worked properly this isn't the right battery but the plug is the, is the right size so I'm just going to use it anyways that telephone never worked correctly it always had varying issues the cordless unit would kind of be met like a hissing type sound while it was charging, which is really kind of odd. And so consequently we didn't use the cordless unit for very long. My grandmother did continue to use the corded base in the bedroom for I believe quite a few years after that. And I also used the answering machine. And that I I'm pretty sure that was the last phone they had before they got the set of Uniden uh, 2080s. And I don't quite remember what 
trigger the replacement of that phone. It was always kind of flaky, but it seemed to work, you know, for the most part. After they replaced it, I had the phone in my possession over here for a while. This is this is when we first moved in. This is like 2010 or something like that, 2011, 12. I used it for a couple years. Um, what I had done was I would I would charge the battery in a different phone, I think, and then I would replace it into this phone. You know, so that you didn't hear the hissing while it charged. And if you used a high capacity battery, like uh, like one of these, for example, it would last a couple weeks before it needed to be recharged. So, at the time, you know, I was very early in my phone collection and didn't have a whole lot of phones. And so at the time, that was worth doing to me. And so I did that. And it, I'm talking seriously. That completely interrupted my train of thought. <sighs> How nice would it be to be able to focus correctly? Um, what was I even talking about? <laughs> oh gosh, this is so bad. This is this is the problem with recording videos after working all day. You get tired. Hmm. Just picture like the hourglass on the on the video screen here as I try to remember what I was talking about. Oh yeah, it was the 2.4 in 2012. Okay, so I was very early in my phone collection stage, and so I had very few phones, and so for me, it was worth it to deal with the battery thing. And that phone, I kind of liked that phone because it had really good side tone to it, which is kind of unusual for a cordless. And at the time, it was one of the better phones I had as far as coverage outside. It worked pretty good outside. There was some other issues too. I think it didn't ring right. Uh, there's a lot of issues with the cordless unit, but it kind of worked enough to make calls. And so I did use it on occasion. I had a belt clip too, which I, I was something I liked. Because at the at the time, the other two phones I had would have been the the XP370 and the XCA650, and neither of those had a belt clip. And quite frankly, neither of those had the best performance outside either. I think the GE at the time had the best performance outside. So anyway, so I used that phone as dilapidated as it was for a while, and uh, I really got as much life out of that phone as humanly possible. And then it slowly just started deteriorating further over the years, and then it just quit. And unfortunately, that particular unit just wasn't made very well, because I've tried to repurchase different ones on multiple occasions. And every time I find one, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, which is kind of frustrating. I think I bought one, and it lasted like a day, and then it quit. <laughs> so... Um, very agitating that I can't find a good one, but that's sometimes that's the case. So I found that some of the General Electric phones from the 900 megahertz era weren't too bad. Some of the App, App Kings, App Links ones were okay. The 2.4 ones, a lot of them didn't seem to be built quite right. And then when you get to 5.8, a lot of them were brand Thompson, and the screens was awful. It was always bad pixels on the screens after just a couple years and same thing with some of the early deck six ones also branded Thompson horrible screens I remember a friend had one in high school he had a, one of those deck six ones the real fancy looking ones with like, like the 411 Google thing on it and uh, the thing chewed through batteries I remember giving him a couple batteries to put in that thing and uh, the screens always went bad on those. I've been trying to get one from my collection for a while and the screens are always bad when I come across them. And you can kind of fix it sometimes. I haven't had the best results fixing it, but that's a whole different story for another day. The screens on these 2.4s and the 900 seem to be okay. Um, I haven't really seen the screens go bad on these. Oh man, I remember that, uh, I remember that touch tone. 
and the sound will come out the side there. Huh. It's pretty cool. It functions a lot like the 2.4 model, I remember. So, uh... Well, it seems like it kind of works. I think it's a 40-channel analog. Got a dedicated physical switch for the ringer. It'll turn that on. In fact, it's in really good condition too. It looks like it was very lightly used, if at all. Let's see if we got anything in the caller ID here. Nothing in the caller ID. No calls. So, well, let's begin by calling it up and see. See what the ringer sound like. Huh? Don't tell me there's no ring on the base. It's a nice greeting on there. Uh, let's see. How could there be no ring on the base? No messages. That's loud. Okay, I have no messages. Jeez, I have to shout. Quick grief. It's so rude. Turn that rude jerk off. Answer off. She's got a bad attitude. Alright, let's try again. It has that delay when you first start ringing the phone. A lot of times on the older units, the cordless will only get like half of the first ring and then it starts ringing normally in synchronization with the signal on the line. A lot of people have commentary about this. They don't like it. I kind of like it because that's what I always remember the phones being like. So it seems to ring okay, but I guess there's no ring on the base. I don't see... I don't see the option for it. Um, you have no messages. Let's turn this rude lady back on and see if she'll record Answer something. Answer on. Why is she shouting? You have no messages. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to yell about it. Good grief. Monday, 12.06 a.m. Monday, 12.06 a.m. 12 a.m. 1 a.m. 2 a.m. 3 a.m. It'll just be 3. 7. Who? Oh. All 8. Oh. All 9. 10. 11. 12. 13. 14. 15. 16. 17. 18. 19. 20. 21. It almost sounds like recordings of somebody saying the numbers and then they just combine Monday, it. Monday, 3.23 a.m. Okay. Hi, you've reached Aaron and Shelby at 8607 Please leave us a message and we'll call you right back. Thank you. The recording quality of that greeting doesn't sound too bad. Hi, you Please leave your message after the tone. Wow, she's very pleasant on air. Please leave your message after the tone. Alright, let's go ahead and call and see what the what the greetings sound like. <phone rings> Missed the whole first ring on that one. Is she not on? Please leave your message after the tone. Well, I'm glad you had a better attitude that time. Why is there a delay? There should not be a delay. I'll call again from the cord. Uh, well, I'll turn the volume down so we don't get no feedback. 
call again from the corded phone here. I am recording a message after the tone. I'm trying not to have a bad attitude even though the answering machine was kind of rude when I first started the video. It's flashing AN on the base. I'm not sure what that means. You have one new message. New message one. You had a better attitude that time. Why is there a delay? There should not be a delay. Monday, 3.20 a.m. End of new messages. Where's the other message? It doesn't seem to have recorded. Okay, now we'll just call again. Maybe this time you can do your job correctly. It's flashing AN, all this time it seems to have recorded. You have one new message. New message one. I am recording the message after the tone. I'm trying not to have a bad attitude even though the engine machine was kind of rude. When I first started the video. Huh? Monday, 3.25 a.m. End of new messages. But that, that's the previous message. What? You have two messages. Message one. You had a better attitude. Message, message one. He raised message two. I am recording the message after the tone. I'm trying not to have message two. He raised end of messages. Okay, so if I record another message, am I going to get the previous message back? That doesn't make any sense. This unit doesn't make any sense. It seems to be playing the previous message rather than the one that I just recorded. So my question becomes, where is the message in between the time that it records and the time that it actually shows up? That's a very odd anomaly, but leave it to General Electrotan to do that. And let's just say AM when it's recording. You have one new message. New message one. Perhaps uh, maybe this time you can do your job correctly. Yep, there's the previous message. Monday, 3.26 a.m. End of new messages. Okay. <laughs> That's outrageous. Let's see if we get that previous message now. Oof. Please leave your message after the tone. You don't work too good. At all.
Now we're going to get the previous message. You have one new message. New message. One. This unit doesn't make any sense. It seems to be playing the previous message rather than the one that I just recorded. So my question becomes, where is the message in between the time that it records and the time that it actually shows up? That's a very odd anomaly, but leave it to General Electrotan to do that. Monday, 3.28 a.m. End of new messages. Goose. You have one new message. New message one. Goose. Monday, three thirty a.m. Okay, that End time. End of new messages. That time it seemed to work correctly. Let's call again and see what transpires. <laughs> Which, Which message, message am I going to get, get this, this time? time? You have one new message. New message one. Which message am I going to get this time? Monday, three thirty one a.m. End of new messages. Okay. Please leave your message after the tone. What, what does this recording, recording sound like? like? Is it this is message or is it the message before this message? You have one new message. New message. One. What does this recording sound like? Is it this message or is it the message before this message? Monday, 3.32 a.m. End of new messages. Okay, that sounded fine. Let's try one more time and see what, what happens. After the tone. How many do you see in the pond? Monday, 333 a.m. Whatever. End of new messages. I have absolutely no explanation for whatever just transpired before. That was bizarre. Well, whoops. Um, looks like the caller ID is working. Some collection of tones, that is. 
I never understood what that is because if you hit that and then you go through it oh maybe does that clear it out I don't know maybe that's what it does anyways let's call let's make a call and see how good the phone sounds Family Farms, where we have an exciting new winter offering as February approaches. Uh, while the farm is currently closed, we want to give you an advance notice that we are opening our wine stand Thursday, February 3rd, and Friday, February 4th, from 12 p.m. Doesn't sound great. It doesn't have a really clean high end, but it sounds perfectly clear. A very convenient way to purchase your favorite Jones wine for the weekends from our wide selection. The wine stand is conveniently adjacent to our parking lot at our Homestead Farm location at 606 Walnut Tree Hill Road here in Shelton, Connecticut. This is as loud as it goes. It's pretty loud. Familyfarms.com, which has a link to our online web store. Also be sure to check out our Super Bowl and Valentine's Day bottle specials in our online wine store. You can certainly stop by Still clear all the way up. It's not bad. Okay, now I'll go ahead and record some testing messages. One new message and 17 old messages. Message one. Okay, this is the first testing message on this General Electric 900 megahertz cordless telephone. It does have a very nice amount of side tone, which I like. And it seems like the incoming audio is plenty clear. So now I am traversing across the room. And let's see how good the signal is. I just heard a little bit of static right there. It's still going. I had a little more static. Nothing obnoxious, but I did hear a little bit of static here and there. A couple of clips of static, a little bit of static, nothing major though. Certainly could still talk on it like that. Uh, but that's not impressive coverage for a 900 to not even go all the way across the room without having some static. Okay, going back into the studio now. now I remember testing a model of phone very similar to this. Might have been the same kind of handset without the answering machine. Uh, and it'd be a, a year or two would go outside and it seemed to have decent range and in fact I recall being kind of impressed by the coverage that it had I also like the feel of the hands that it's very heavy and the buttons are pretty firm and they feel of quality which is surprising because General Electric's phones and not the first thing I associate with quality at all. In fact, generally, haha, General Electric generally, generally I find General Electric phones are not particularly reliable. But to some of these 900 megahertz units from Airwings from the early 2000s did seem to be decent. And I think this is one telephone I will like using over and out. End of messages. The testing messages got cut a bit short because the battery ran out of charge. I wanted to record a second one and hear what it sounded like hanging up into the base, but the battery is out of charge. So anyways, uh, it seems like it works pretty good. The pickup was very sensitive. I didn't find it to be super clear. It kind of sounded a bit muffled, but I think that's just how the phone is because the incoming audio had a very similar sound to it. Anyways, uh, pretty happy with the performance of this phone. The range isn't quite as good as I would have expected, but I do have to keep in mind it's not Uniden, and it's a very small phone. So the range is not going to be extraordinary on a small unit. There's no, there's no external antenna on the base at all. So, you know, and this is pretty short, so we're not working with much. But I think for what it was and what it cost, I think this is a pretty decent phone.